I'm your host Hassan Bilal and I'm delighted to have with me today Hassan Osama and Rabin Sulaqa, the Iraq International and we have a very packed show for you today. Rabin, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I know you're on your break. Uh, how's the Maldives? Hello, thank you to be here. Uh, it's an honor to be here again and uh, Maldives is good. It's raining today but uh, I'm enjoying life, taking care of my body and yeah. I'm guessing it's a bit nicer than um, than Serbia there. It's really nice here. Uh, like I said, it's uh, been a long summer, so it's nice to come away from everything. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it, man. And um, we also have Hassan Osama all the way from Canada. Hassan, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. So, um, let's jump right into things, right? So... Rebin, this podcast, I'm going to try focusing on you because I want to see your thoughts from an Iraqi player and as a football fan and as somebody who, obviously, your insight into football is going to be significantly more detailed than us as fans, okay? So, um, for once in this podcast, I'm going to try to take a step back and allow you to really um, explain to us what we don't see as football fans. Now, um, with the squad selection for the Golf Cup, we saw a lot of young players or let's say players that are not regular starters or not regularly selected in the squad. Did you know about any of those players or have you trained with them? What were your thoughts when you saw that squad selection? Uh, I mean, uh, I didn't have any thoughts because uh, I knew that this player was there was with us in, uh, in the World Cup qualifications uh, against Bahrain in Iran. Uh, I mean, the most the, the guys who started the first game in the Gold Cup was there training with us every day, you know. And I saw some quality. I mean, I didn't see them before because it's hard. It's like we, the Iraqi league wasn't even they they don't even play the Iraqi league now, right? Yeah. So uh, so I saw them in trainings, and I mean, I saw some qualities, and and they did really good. Like I mean, they played good against Qatar, which. They win the Asian Cup and they play really good games, you know. So I did. I wasn't surprised that they did good because I mean I saw the quality in trainings. Uh, surprise of, over the selections, maybe not because you know a lot of players had FIFA days and I wasn't there by, by myself because I I had leagues, you know. So so it's good that the young players get get chance and you know get get games in the in the national teams. So when you were training with them. Did you see any particular player stand out, or was there anyone that really impressed you and you thought, wow, like this is the next best uh, big thing for Iraq? I mean, impress, I cannot say it because you know, when when you are in the, in camp before two like big games in the qualifications, you you don't do so much like I mean, uh, in like you do in a week with the club, you do most tac uh, tactically things, you know, so. So what I saw, it was quality that I saw more in the games, you know what I mean? You have to play with the player, you cannot only see in trainings if he's good or not, you, ha you have to see him play, you know. I want to take you back to your first ever game for Iraq. For these players in the Golf Cup, some of them were making their debut, some of them were kind of making their first or second performances. I mean, I remember my first game, we was going, uh, we went to Japan. Uh, in Yokohama Stadium, you know, the World Cup final stadium 2002. And I remember we traveled, me and Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Yassin together uh, from Stockholm, because I was, at that time, I was playing in Sweden. And we traveled two days before the game, or three, I don't remember, three days before the game, and we arrived two days before the game. You know, it was 24 hours trip. Uh, we flew business, actually, uh, so that was comfortable. Uh, I remember uh, Akram Sama was the coach, and uh, when I arrived, we trained. Maybe, yeah, we trained directly. So I I arrived seven at night, and we trained like nine something. And in, he came after to me, and he said like, I have to see you in action. So nine in the morning, training tomorrow. You know, I and I didn't sleep all the night. I was jet lagged. <laughs> so I remember it was really tough going into the game you know I was nervous uh, I was 23 my first game uh, I'm outside I didn't even speak Arabic back then you know so uh, and it was full stadium you know and I like I said I didn't sleep well 
I wasn't well prepared, but it went good, you know. <laughs> it was a painful loss that say, one. I, I cannot say that I performed performed well after four zero. You know, I'm defender. Yeah. So an additional question I want to ask you as well then is for these players, when it comes to representing Iraq, is that the same as playing for any other national team or when it comes to playing for Iraq, are there different pressures on the players? How does it compare, do you think? Football-wise, maybe not because, you know, the only thing the Iraqi people have right now is, is the sport, like football. If, like if Iraq win anything, like in sports, everyone is happy for that guy or for the team, you know. So in, in kind of this, like, I mean, you have like, you have to make the people happy, you know what I mean? Like, if you compare to people like that who play for Swedish national team, uh, I know that the pressure is only from the media. Like, the fans doesn't, you know, if you play good, okay, he play good, but we we play good, but we, we lose, you know. So, I think if you compare these two national teams, which I, I'm close to, uh, I mean, it's bigger pressure on, on players in Iraq uh, from the media, from the people, like, from everyone. Every, from the children until the oldest guy, you know, like... How, how does this affect the players? Does it, does it inspire the players? Do you think sometimes players get scared from this? Or how does it affect them? I mean, I don't know how the, you know how these things affect the player from Iraq. But for me, I can, I can speak for me. I know that these this kind of things motivate me to, to go out and play even better. Uh, like, if I remember when we were playing in Iran and I was like, why is it not more people here, you know? I, like the last qualified, you know, I was like so sad. It was we had only like three, four thousand there, uh, and I was like wishing to to play in front of the Iraqi people and like just go out and ki kill the opponent team, you know, just eat them up because of the of the pressure we make on the opponent and and the, of the energy the fans give us, you know. So so of course for I can speak for myself like. I, I get inspired of these things, and I get like I, I'm more hungry to go out and play even better. Like the, the extra ten percent you can give, you know. Let's focus on the golf cup then. Um, the the tournament started only a few weeks after uh, you broke up. We just uh, drawn with Bahrain nil nil, and we'd beat an, uh, Iran. I think it was two one. What were your thoughts going into that tournament? Did you think we can win, or did you think? Like uh, a semi-final would be a good result. I followed every game uh, actually uh, from home. Uh, just that to be clarified. So I I see the games. You know, uh, my thoughts was I don't I didn't have so so much ex expectation because you know when you have expectation then you put more pressure on your player uh, on your own player like uh, from the media from the people. Of course, we win against Iran. And we draw against Bahrain, and everybody think now, okay, you know, we we can go in and, and play, and we are maybe favorites in this tournament. But remember that this tournament is not easy, you know. Like I mean, you have you see Bahrain win the tournament, you have Qatar, you have Saudi, uh, you have Kuwait, you have UAE there. Uh, but I think re Iraq did really good. Like from from my point of view, they did they did really good, and they we lost on the penalty. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a, a lottery. You know, you can everybody everybody can win on penalties. You know what I mean. But for me, Iraq Iraq did really good tournament, and we had like uh, many young players come out come out and play, and yeah, the coach give them chance, and and he he have more players to choose on now. You know, so uh, for me, it was a successful tournament. Can I just ask Hassan? Hassan, um, as a fan now. What were your thoughts going into the tournament? Obviously, we've we've seen uh, Katanish do really well prior to the tournament. What were your expectations going into it? Yeah, so I mean, uh, really going into the Gulf Cup, yeah, I, like the main idea is to develop and blood new players for the national team so that you can use them going forward. That's like from my view as a fan, that's that should be the goal for competitions like the Gulf Cup. And we saw players, you know, like Mohamed Rida, uh, Mohamed Qasim, uh, some players that like really came up and took the chance. And you know, we can take advantage of them, like going forward. Like these are like, quality players that uh, uh, we can really 
use moving forward. And that's like that's the primary goal to give players like this a chance uh, with the national team because the more experienced players, we know what they can offer. We we know that they are, you know, uh, where they fit in with the national team. With young players like that, sometimes they don't get uh, quite the opportunities so that they need. So uh, that's what we saw in the Gulf Cup. And for that reason, uh, I think it was a success, even though we left a little bit earlier than uh, I think we could have. I think we could have gone a little bit further if we had a little bit more luck. But uh, in any case, Danny, it's, uh, it's a success in my opinion. Absolutely. I agree with both of you there. I think in terms of it being an opportunity for these young players to give themselves a better chance of being selected in the future. They've done really, really well. Uh, let's start focusing on the Qatar game. So, Robin, what did we do uh, against Qatar that really allowed us to beat them? What, in terms of tactics, you know Katanich better than us. What do you think just worked for us on this particular match? You know, I think Qatar was surprised the way we played uh, because I remember when we played them uh, in Asia Cup, we played them for, uh, for with the four back line, you know. And uh, now when we played them in Golf Cup, we came out with with three at the back, five if you want want to say that, and they get really surprised. And they, like I mean, besides from the from the first ten minutes, if I don't remember wrong. They had like two couple, two couple good chances to score, and and after that they didn't have anything against us, because we locked their like they, you know Qatar they play almost from the wing like Haidus and Akram, and they come inside in the middle, right? Yeah. And if you if you lock down Haidus and Akram, and Qatar doesn't know how, how to play, what to do, and they don't create any chances, because they don't create they don't have creative midfielders, right? What we do. It, was like we, we, we played two against one against Haidus and, and uh, Akram all the time and they didn't create anything. So Qatar didn't have anything against us because because of the five back line we played. This is my opinion. What about Mohamed Qasim? How did he manage to win us that game? What did he do right that allowed him to really dominate the match in the way he did? I mean, you know, some players have like the perfect day. As a player, I can tell you that because... I had that against Iran, you know, so uh, you just feel it. Like when you go out as a player, you feel like, okay, everything like on the warm up, everything's going smooth. Like you don't miss any passes. You feel like you feel energy. You feel you feel that that you're ready. So he he took the chance he got. Like, I mean, he didn't play. Don't misunderstand me wrong now. He didn't play better than anyone in the, in the squad that game in the team because everyone did a really good game but you know he had this uh the cross and it, it went into goal and he had you know the extra luck you need in the game sometimes yeah so i've been thinking uh, i can't remember the last goal i saw that was better than his second strike for us i'm I'm just against uh cambodia against cambodia that was a good one i reckon this was better just because against who it was against and the timing of it yeah, but it's still tough, you know, like you have to shoot the ball in the net. <laughs> yeah, I mean, MJ, MJ was really good. Uh, if you if you guys saw, saw that game. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have, I remember against Qatar uh, in Basra, the friendly game. Are you talking about when uh, Ahmed Yassin scored the counter-attack? Yeah, when we played like really good from behind and like we had like some passes between and poof, he's free and Burwa passed him the ball. Yeah, 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 I remember this. So, um... That that was like a proper special counter attack. It was a really amazing goal. I'm just thinking yeah, yeah. now the another very good goal that I've seen recently. Ali Adnan versus uh, I think it was Vietnam in the uh, Vietnam, uh, the group stages. The free kick. Yeah, the free kick, the last second one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean this this was a special goal and it's it's up there with all those others in my opinion. Yeah, of course, of course, it, it's a special goal because you know. He dominated the game and he scored two goals, his second goal and we, like a winning goal too. So, of course, it's a special goal. Definitely. Right, so we beat Qatar, completely unexpected, but we topped the group uh, pretty much as soon as we win that match. What about UAE? Now, you were at the game when we lost to UAE in the Asian Cup. Uh, I think it was 2015, right? Uh, Asian Cup, no. Uh, I lost against UAE in the World Cup qualify in in uh, in Dubai. No, in Abu Dhabi, two zero. Okay, 
What happened to the UAE in your opinion? How comes the second match where we beat them 2-0, we just, we beat them without even really playing our best. What, what do you think in your opinion, what's happened to the quality of their team that allowed us to really just dominate them with such ease? I mean, f first of all, you have to th you have to think it's eleven players on the other side. Uh, you have to do your job. You have to score. You know everything like this. But I think UAE they are in a generation shift. They they change generation. Uh, so you can see that it's a, it's a lot of new faces, of course, and it's hard to play. Like you, you was criticizing. Uh, uh, the media was criticizing Katanes in the beginning because we was playing like, like different. Like it's it's difficult to, as a coach to come to a new group and and you don't have like this this two three four stars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and you don't know like you have to find a way to play, which way you're gonna fit the player and everything like this. So I think UAE are in uh, generation shift. So this is my my answer for that question. Ala Abdul Zahra, he's one of the one of the senior players in the squad. What did you make of his performance? Because he really stood out in this match. But he's also somebody that where a lot of people question whether it's wise that he should be in the squad. What does he bring in as as a player that has been in the same changing room as him? Is there something a lot of fans are missing? He's he brings he brings in experience. He brings in like a leadership that maybe was missing before when uh, like the older play players was was not there uh, i mean a lot of iraqi players see him as a as an idol maybe you know uh, someone that they can go to to talk and get help and even in the training you can see sometimes when when some of the players is not there like uh, mentally he's, he's there talking with them you know come on and we have to be serious you know uh, stuff like that you know S small stuff that can change something uh, and i think it's good uh, good call up because as you see uh, we had better result with him in the squad than without him so I cannot speak about anything else there now we're to we've talked about Ala Abdul Zahra Ala Abbas seems to score every time he gets on the pitch one, yeah. of, one of the issues for Katan is surely is figuring out a way to play Ala alongside Mimi how do you see that working yourself That that is, I mean, that is up to coach if he want to play two strikers or one. Then he have to change the system. And as long as we play this system, it have been working, and we win like a couple of good games, uh, and brings confidence to the, to the group. So, so for me, it's like I said, it's up to coach if he want to play two strikers or or one. But I think the system he play now is working. So why change something that work? Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, I think the, the defensive five seems to be working really well for Iraq and uh, I think right now to make a change that would uh, change the system that wouldn't be very wise. Yeah, like I told you before, remember last podcast, I told you that that the defensively we are, we are there now, like better than before. Now we like, okay, we, we do everything good defensively, then we, we have to keep continuing developing the game, you know, like the offense, how we can attack. Uh, what we're gonna do when we have the ball when we win the ball so this is where we are now and this is where coach have to get more time to develop the group because he don't have so much time with like with all the players he wants he want to have in the squad so every time he every time he calls up a, a squad he's there like working with them maybe six six trainings maximum you know it's, it's really difficult to, to, to do big changes in, in short time how much of an effect is it given that a lot of the players right now aren't actually playing regularly because of the Iraq league being frozen of course it's, as a coach if you want you want your player like all the 30 players you want to take out they playing day in day out this is the most like ideal situation for a coach so the Iraqi league is not working it's not, they don't play Iraqi league it's gonna, of course going to affect his, his choices in the in the in the in the future, these players need need to need to play games. Of course, uh, I can I can be training six months without games, and I come to the game. I I, I would not be ready. I, the timing is not there. You understand what I mean? Like in terms of the sharpness and the, the match ball, fitness. Yeah, yeah, match fitness and the timing in, in the in the runnings in, in the 
in the movement in the when you're gonna get the ball like uh, as a defender if i'm not playing like more than two months and then i go even if i'm in shape you know like i train hard every day in the gym and like uh, by myself i would not have the same timing in in the duels of course yeah of course you need you need that sharpness in terms of how yeah. quick you pass the ball how you move etc and uh, just training doesn't really replicate that no no of course not we ended up playing once again bahrain right now the last three games before this bahrain we had lost the final one nil and then we drew twice in the world cup uh, qualifiers can yeah. i can i ask hassan osama hassan what did you think of us playing Bahrain and were you confident beforehand? Like, did you think we can win this game? Uh, like, really ahead of this game, uh, like, looking at even like the previous games, we don't have, you know, like a, a super strong record against Bahrain. Like, it's always a very, very tight, uh, tight margin. And we saw that at the qualifiers, two zero zero games that were both quite tight, really. First one was uh, one, then, one one, wasn't it? Yeah, the first one, one one in Manama, and then the second uh, zero zero. Yeah. So you know, we, I feel like when we play against them, we do, you know, mostly dominate the play. However, we're not really converting enough, uh, you know, chances into goals, and uh, we converted chances this time, uh, but uh, we also let in a couple as well. So uh, I, just like it's following the same trend as the previous games, it's uh, you know another tight game and. Uh, uh, it really it ends it ends as a draw and then it goes up to penalties. Which penalties? It's uh, really it's a uh, it's a lot of luck involved in there. So uh, I was expecting a very tight game, and that's uh, that's what we got. Uh, you know, with uh, a little bit more luck, we could have been uh, in the final. But uh, you know, that's uh, that's football. Indeed. Um, during the game, Robin, me and you were, were messaging each other over Instagram, and we were talking. You were quite confident we were going to win, and um, where did it all go wrong, essentially? Where did we actually lose that game? Because up until the 44th minute, it seemed like that was going to be a comfortable victory again. I mean, I mean, the first half we had them, like, we played really good, you know, like, we, we had our chances, we took them, we scored, and they didn't, they didn't create so many chances, if I remember right right yeah i don't remember uh, them creating uh, too many let's have a look at the stats here um so they actually we had 17 shots they had 13 but i don't know how much of that came in the second half really compared to yeah. the first half yeah 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 i mean we did we did really good like really good first half and 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 that that goal before the half time just before the half time that's that's a really big psychological uh, goal, you know, for for both teams. Like I mean, like Bahrain, you go inside the locker room, you feel the energy from the goal. Like if I'm if I was playing in Iraq, I was feeling like really angry to 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 consider one goal just before halftime, uh, and just go out second half and like try to change that energy in in the locker room. It's really difficult, you know. Like you have to get like maybe a fast goal in the first uh, second half direct and feel the energy again. So I think that that second goal uh, change changed a lot because when Bahrain came out, there was there was playing a little bit better than us, I think, but we still had control. Like I mean, they didn't create that many uh, dangerous chances in the second half. So the game get more locked. Like no of the. No one of the teams want want to want to lose the game. You understand? Yeah. So they're so, not taking so, risks. So, yeah, yeah. So if you play maybe a different game, not a semi final in, in golf cup, maybe you see a different two di different teams. Like one team want to win the the game more than the, the other team. But in the semi final in golf cup, you feel that okay, you get you get a goal like against you just before half time. Go out and do good second half don't consider any goal and like we will see what's happened from there i think this is what what our attitude was second half i think i don't know this is what i was feeling watching the game mimi scored the first uh ibrahim bai scored an amazing lob and at that point we were two one up the the second equalizer for bahrain was just a long ball over the defense now uh, we had Jalal Hassan in goal, um, Ahmed Ibrahim, 
uh, we talked about captains and we talked about uh, Ala Abdul Zahra. Ahmed Ibrahim is, in my opinion, an incredible footballer. Very experienced, fights to the death, proper leader. Reminds me of a kind of Roy Keane character for the team. But alongside him, we had um, Ali Faiz and Maytham Jabbar, who are both unexperienced relative to, let's say, for example, you and Saad Nadaq. If they were on the pitch, instead of Ali uh, and uh, Maytham, you and uh, Saad, would we have conceded that goal? <laughs> nah, I think yes, maybe. I, I don't know. I cannot answer that because I was not on the pitch. I cannot uh, speak down my fe fellow fellow colleagues uh, because they, they did a really good tournament, like I said. Uh, it was lack, lack of concentration, I think. No, not a mistake. Only lack of concentration before the half time. Sometimes you lose concentration because as a human being, you cannot co be concentrated 90 minutes, right? Yeah. So sometimes in the game you have a, a dip uh, there and there. So so ja, ja, that, that, that was just lack of concentration. I mean, unfortunately, uh, but still we didn't l lose the game there. You know what I mean? So so this is my, my analysis. Right. That. We went into half time at 2-2 and I personally at that point I thought we were in trouble now because you said it yourself once Bahrain sat back we struggled to break them down. We tend to do well against teams that attack us because we, uh, we hit them on the counter attack and they're exposed at the back and we can kind of find space in between. Especially we create a lot of, uh, a lot of chances through the wings. But when a team sits back against us, we tend to struggle when they have like a low block in defense. Where do you think we struggled with in terms of creating opportunities? What was the reason behind it and how do we correct it? I mean, like I said, I mean, the second half, I think there was better than us. But I don't think in the extra time there was a better team, you know. I think we was much, much closer to the win. Uh, uh, in the, I, I feel that we get we, we got back the, the, the energy they had the, the boys and they wanted to they, they, they wanted really to win the, uh, the game like in extra times I saw a different team from the second half uh, and remember that we had a, we had an injury in the middle right so and yeah I wanted to ask you about this specifically actually that was my next question yeah. regarding yeah. Uh, Amjad Atwan he's look he's had his fair share of criticisms from me from many other fans and how do you see him in the squad? Do you think he's proven his doubt is wrong? Do you think he should be starting? What does he bring to the table for the Arab national team? I mean, I cannot say to you who, who should be starting because th this is the coach, the coach job, you know? Uh, like, like the players, they have to only come there and give their best and the coach decides who's starting. But I think Amjad have been been doing his job like really long time now uh, I mean he, he when he always plays he he's not that bad he's not bad you know he always plays with uh, plays with a lot of energy and fighting in the middle and trying to win the balls and of course sometimes he take wrong decisions but I think it's because of the age now he's he have developed he have getting older more mature uh, so yeah in the last previous games I think he played really good good for the national team I think he's starting to find his form very much with the with the national team and it's exactly what you mentioned earlier he's, his decision making seems to have improved he's playing the right passes more often than not which is uh, really good to see yeah exactly it's, that come with the age and many games you know you have to play games to 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 take right decisions and and I mean no Nobody's perfect, right? Uh, everybody makes mistakes. Uh, even even the biggest the biggest uh, players make mista mistakes. Like so, so you just have to just you know have to shut down the criticism and the media and just do your your job, you know. And in the end, if you are good enough, you will play. If you're not, you will not play. This is like this is our job. When it came to penalty shootouts, it's of course it's a bit of a lottery. You don't know who's gonna win. What did you think of um, Hamad Qasim's penalty miss and his response afterwards? I mean, everybody miss you. I remember Ahmed Yassin miss right against Bahrain. Mm. 
Uh, yeah. So now everybody missed the everybody can miss the penalty, and his reaction, of course, is young player, and he wants you want to you want to show your country, you want to do something good for your country, and I was I was feeling sad for him, you know, but I think. They took care of it, like I mean, the the management of the team and the players and everybody like was supporting him. So, so hopefully he's better now. So hopefully he's he's don't like think about it too much and and that gonna affect his his football. Would you say this comes back to the point we made earlier regarding the the pressure on the Iraq team? Do you think like um, as as a player in the national team, quite young? Do you think he feels like he lets down? All the all the Iraqi people, the protesters, etc. Yeah, especially maybe because of the situation we have in Iraq now, right? Uh, it was, I mean, it started against Iran. We win and we make them happy, and you know, like, I, I mean, the the the, the square in Baghdad was crazy. I saw some pictures of the Iran game, and then Bahrain game, and then we, they win against Qatar, and win against UAE, and go through to semi final, and. You know, of course, there's a lot of pressure to make that, to make the, uh, the people happy because of the situations and we have in Iraq now, especially. So, so yeah, maybe a little bit. Katinic has, I mean, it was a loss in the terms that we got kicked out of the tournament, but I think it comes down as a, um, as a draw, essentially, when it looks at the stats, because we lost on penalties with Bahrain. Katinic is, exactly. yeah, he's lost, I think, only one of his last maybe 16 games. I haven't got the stat in front of me, but he's done really, really well. Can you talk to me in terms of what is Iraq's philosophy? If I ask you, explain to me Katinic's tactics. Explain to me what he believes in as a manager. How can you explain it to me in, in your opinion or how you see things? I mean... Philosophy, of course, uh, we have we changed now a little bit uh, in the system, like we mentioned before, that we play five at the back. But I think he want discipline. He want uh, hardworking guys uh, that want to work for the team. You know, not uh, that uh, he don't care if you are a big star or not. He wants you to work for the team, and I think it's, it's a good thing. You know, like he want the team spirit to win, not only the individualism, because. Uh, one guy cannot win the game for us. Maybe one, two games, but not eventually 30 games, you know. Uh, and uh, I think his philosophy, like, I mean, with the ball, we get a lot of, like, freedom to do, like, to pass the ball, everything. Uh, but in the defense, he wants us to be disciplined and, and do the job 100%, of course. But uh, offense, he, he gives us a lot of freedom and uh, he gives us... Uh, he give us, of course, we have like structure how to how to attack, uh, how to how to defend, and then it's up to you guys. Like he always says, up to you guys. I cannot give you, I cannot say to you how how the game's gonna be because sometimes they they will do like the the team we play against. They will do some changes. So can you take us? Fun. Can you take us into a journey uh, to let's say Iraq in training? Katinich is there. What what are you guys practicing? What are you guys doing? Uh, how how does that session play out? I mean, I don't know if, if that is a good thing to do because some coaches doesn't like that. But I mean, we we train like I have been training all my life. We have some, you know, warm. You warm up. Uh, you do some exercises. And then you do some tactics, uh, technically things. Then you play in the games like. We train and defensively, as, as same as uh, at the same time we train at, at the offensively. So if he, put, if he put two teams, one team train on defense and one team on attack, and and uh, the other way, you understand. So we put the same amount of the work in every aspect in the game. Uh, this is my opinion. You've played in quite a few countries now. You've played in Qatar. You've played in Sweden. Yeah. You've played in Serbia. And you've played in Iraq. What would you say is the biggest differences in terms of training and actually playing between those countries? How does that, playing in Iraq or for the Iraq national team, how does that um, differ compared to the other places you've played? I mean, if you compare the, the, the Asian football with the European football, it's more, I mean, European football is more tact 
tactically, uh, defensively, more like helping each other. Uh, I mean, in Qatar, I was like left behind many times, one against one as a center back. And that that's never happened in, in Sweden, that you leave your center back alone because they know that it's a death sentence uh, to do that. But I developed my game a lot, one against one, because of playing in Asia, in, in Qatar and and, uh, and like this. So I have developed uh, like the, you can say the, the most difficult uh, thing you can develop as a center back to be like a little bit faster, uh, better against one against one, uh, winning the balls, not getting like knocked so many times with the ball. So. So th this is the biggest difference. I mean, they are so good indivi individually uh, in, uh, and te uh, technically, the, the Asian players and especially the Iraqi players. Uh, but what they lack is maybe the, the education uh, from young young youth. There's a question that yeah. I've been wondering, Robin, and maybe you can, ha you can help me out uh, and understand this. Why is it that Sweden produces so many Iraqi footballers? There are a lot of Iraqis in Holland, a lot of Iraqis in England. No one, no country, even America. America, we've produced Justin Miram. Uh, Yasser Qasim is the real only uh, Brit. Osama Rashid yeah. and Rowan Amin from, um, from Holland. What is it about Sweden and producing Iraqi footballers? I don't know. <laughs> That that is a good good question. I didn't think about even. I mean, I've, we have I've, we have I mean, so many. If you look at have... Brawa, if you look at Ahmed Yassin, yourself, um, there's plenty of young players as well. I I find it incredible that Sweden continues to pump out these these young footballers. That that is a good question. I've I've never think about before. Uh, I mean. I don't know. I'm like I don't have any any answer to you. I mean, uh, Holland is a good league. Uh, like I mean, these countries you you just mentioned, it's not the bad countries, you know. Uh, mm. And it's, it can be like in terms of paperwork and everything. Like I mean, I, for me it was really quite quite easy to fix my paper because I, I am born in Iraq uh, and stuff like that. Maybe you know. Yeah, so you've been with Iraq for nearly four or five years. What would you say, as somebody who's very experienced, one of the more experienced expats, to young Iraqi talents like Ali Al Hamadi, who plays for um, for Swansea under 23s, or Louis Al Ani? These are two expats. One of them based in London, uh, in England. One of them based in Morocco. Hopefully, both of them, or one of them at least, I know for certain, is going to be at the Asian Cup in a couple of weeks. As somebody as experienced as you. What would you say to them as to guide them? Just be yourself. Uh, like, I mean, just go there, do you, uh, respect the, the culture. Uh, because, like, I mean, like I said before, uh, remember in the last podcast that we have different mindset. Uh, so just go there and re try to respect and un understand their, like, mindset too, you know. Don't, don't go there and, and lock your own mindset and be like, I'm gonna do me, do you, but still respect your environment, you know? Of course, yeah, because it's a, it's a different mentality and this is something as experts we need to be aware of when it comes yeah. to being around uh, Iraqis that were local, essentially. So you have, you have to adapt and, and just try to be respectful to everyone, everybody there and, and yeah, like I said before, uh, don't come with a locked man mindset. This was sent in by Araking94 on Twitter. He asks, Rebin, who is your favorite Iraqi player ever? And how would you feel if we qualified for the World Cup? My favorite Iraqi player have to be... Have, have you seen me play? Yeah, you have. And you know my style. Yeah, yeah. Of playing. Of course. Right? Yeah. What do you, what do you think I'm going to answer? Me? Uh, it's probably yeah. going to be... I have two people in mind, either Nashid Akram or Salam Shakir. Nashid Akram. I know it, because uh, you, you seem to be very calm on the ball and very relaxed, and I knew it means Nashid. And Nashid, Nashid is, uh, is my favorite player as well. He's, um, I, I, remember, I remember Asian Cup 2007 when they won. I saw two games, uh, semi-final and final, and he was amazing. I was like, wow, 
you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, who do you think it'll, will fill that void that Neshet left in the team in terms of the the maestro in the middle? Oof. That, that is a good, good question. Never compare a player to a great player, you know what I mean? Like, every player have their own identity and their own style of playing, right? Uh, but we have some good midfielders, like, I mean, Safa is there, Amjad is there, uh, Usama is there, uh, and now young players uh, we saw against Qatar. So uh, we have some future there that can fill in. Fill in. Okay, so Robin, I have a really good question from um, Mehdi Karib8. He asks me, or he asks you, I should say, why do uh, European players struggle to kind of replicate the form that they have for their clubs with the national team? Why is it sometimes they're, they're doing really good for their club, but when they come to Iraq, they're not really able to do the exact same in terms of quality and performance? I kind of uh, answered that question before uh, when we were speaking about European and uh, like Asian football. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's dif different football. Like, I mean, in Europe, you have different tactics, different player. You know your player better, right? And and coming to national team with different mindset, with different kind of football, and like you 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 don't know your player so much right away. Like, they're gonna pass you on the left side, right side. They're gonna pass you in the space or in your feet. Like, they don't know you, and you don't know them so well in the beginning. I mean, I went to Qatar and that helped me so so much, like understanding the football there and how how we're gonna play and how these guys plays, you know. So so this is the biggest difference between like why they play so good in the club and they don't do so so good in the in the national team is because of the difference in the football and and the, the understanding of each other. So. What would you say for you is your next move in terms of going forward? Uh, you're currently in Serbia. Talk us through how uh, things are going there. I mean, uh, I just break up, uh, break my contract with the team, uh, with my team, uh, because of this uh, of social uh, social stuff. Uh, I didn't feel so well there. I was playing every game, but uh, not my position every game. Uh, I was playing defensive defensive mid midfield so I choose to break my contract so I, I am on vacation now uh, and yeah after Christmas I will start speaking with clubs and people that help me to find a, a good, good club do you, have, do you have anywhere in mind you'd prefer to go or are you looking to go back to maybe the Middle East or is it strictly Europe you're looking for or what my, my favourite league is, is the Italian league you know practically technically the way they play, the way I play. So that would be my dream to go, but uh, I'm open for many options. I can go back and stay in Europe. So we will see what's going to happen in this window. It's, uh, I'm looking I'm looking for something uh, longer this time. So if I sign a contract, I will sign a longer contract because now I'm 27, I have to think about getting married, family, and everything like this. So I have to settle down. I mean, Robin, I'm I'm 27 as well, and okay. I'll be honest with you. When I look at you, I, I just I can't believe that you're the same age as me because it just you've been with the Iraqi team so long, you've seen so much with the national team, and um, the way you cope with the pressure and when you're out there on the stadium, I've always assumed you're at least 30. I don't know why. But it's a, if anything, it's a compliment. How how do you cope with the pressure of like when you're there on the pitch, right? Uh, like let's go back to Muhammad Qasim. If you were in his position, how do you kind of block out all that the the noise and all the stuff that goes on in your head as a, as a experienced footballer now? I mean, you have to be this kind of person from 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 the day you get like you come to the life i mean i am i have been the same person since i was the little guy you know like if you put pressure on me i don't care 
this like my mindset i never cared about like if somebody like telling me oh this is a big game you have to win i just like i just go out and have fun this is my mentality uh, and and the other thing is i don't care about who's speaking about me what they speak about me i always been the same like you can speak shit about me in 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 on on twitter every day i would not like you is don't touching me you know what i mean yeah so you just you focus so, on yourself and nothing else really matters yeah i cannot change what people think right yeah I can only thing i can do is is concentrate on my on my game and, and hopefully one day i will end the mind through my through my uh, performances Robin, one final question before I let you go back to enjoying the Maldives. Um, you've heard of Peter Guargis in um, he's playing right now for Brighton and Hove Albion. Yeah, yeah, I speak with him uh, long ago. So he's a, he's another uh, another young player to come out of Sweden. And Hassan and or Has underscore Ali one, he asks on Twitter, how can we convince younger Iraqi talents in Sweden to play for Iraq? Specifically, though, let's focus on him. We need you to get him to play for Iraq. How are we going to do that? Oof. By, <laughs> by let, let me talk to him. No, I'm joking. Uh, uh, I don't know. Like, just explain. Like, I mean, explain how 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 it is to play for Iraq. Which kind of love you get in Iraq? You know. Like, I mean, well, come to Iraq at the. Ex ex I mean, we get love from the fans and. I want to take picture with you, talk with you, you know, just sit down with you. So, so just telling him about the fine things Iraqi national team is, you know, not, it's not only about, Iraq is not only about playing, you know, like when you play, you, it's like a 40 million in feeling what you feel on the pitch. Yeah. And you feel what they feel on the pitch, you know, so. It's bigger than football, right? Yeah, you cannot explain it with words. You have to feel it by yourself. Well, fingers crossed. We uh, we get to see him in the, in the famous Iraqi shirt soon. So fingers yeah. crossed. Inshallah. Inshallah. Robin, thank you so much for your time. I really wish you uh, all the best in terms of finding a new club. Please keep us up to date. Uh, the fans would love to hear from you soon again. And yeah, enjoy your trip in the Maldives, man. You deserve it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It was pleasure. a pleasure talking and sharing my, my thoughts. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. That's fantastic insight from Rebin. Obviously, as a footballer, he sees things completely different to fans like myself and Hassan Osama, who we have on the line. Hassan, obviously, when Rebin's there, I'm not going to let you speak. I didn't speak myself, but now I want to hear from you. <laughs> okay. Um... When it comes to going forward, the players that featured in the Golf Cup, how many of them do you think will be selected in the squad to uh, face Hong Kong? Uh, honestly, uh, I'm not expecting too many changes because uh, uh, Katanecha looks like he's got uh, you know a good thing going. He's got a like a squad that's mostly set. Uh, he's got the back line. It's pretty set with, you know, uh, Saad Nataq, uh, Rebin, and uh, Ahmed Ibrahim. So, uh, really, it's going to be a, a couple players is what I'm expecting. So, uh, uh, Mohamed Qasim, I believe uh, I, I'd be shocked if he wasn't uh, rewarded for his uh, performance at the Golf Cup with, you know, more call-ups. Uh, I expect him to be um, part of the team moving forward. Uh, someone I'd like to see more of... Uh, Sharif uh, Abdelkalim, I think he was pretty good over the like the, the games at the Golf Cup. Uh, he looked pretty lively. I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more of him. Uh, I don't know if he will make it because we do have quite a few wingers, especially if Justin uh, Miram and uh, Ahmed Yassin uh, return with the team, then it might be a little bit tough. Uh, however, uh, you know, I'm expecting maybe one or like, you know, two or three maybe. You know, Mohamed Qasim, uh, Mohamed Rida might be. Uh, Maytham Jabbar, that kind, those kinds of names is what I'm expecting. I'm not expecting them to be pushed in right away because they are young players and Katanech, uh, he seems to be a little bit more pragmatic, especially with the you know, changes to the team. So you think they'll, uh, be, they'll be selected in the squad rather than be starters? More, more in that, yeah, something more like that. Uh, so Mohamed Qasim more you know, coming in uh, off the bench. 
possibly against Hong Kong, you know, it's a little bit more. Uh, I think it's more likely if they, that they start from the start. Uh, someone like Kremlin Kassim might start from the beginning. It might be just because it's uh, Hong Kong. It's not quite as big of a challenge as, you know, a game like Iran, for example. However, it is. Uh, uh, I I think uh, Katanich is be- he's better served with uh, uh, easing these players in more rather than just dropping them in. Uh, but uh, yeah, I I think more players like that would be just as part of the play, part of the team rather than you know as uh, as protagonists in the team. I yeah. think with uh, with Katanich, he's gonna have to find the right balance because we've seen I guess expat slowly being pushed away from the team if you want to word it yeah. like that or whatever. But come March, that's gonna be quite some time without the Iraqi league restarting, and it doesn't look like it's gonna restart anytime soon. A lot of the players that were selected that are local to the Iraqi league, they're, they're not really going to be uh, match fit. They're not going to have that sharpness about them. And we quite likely are going to see the likes of Justin and Ahmed Yassin and maybe one or two others returning. Maybe Osama Rashid, for example. Mm-hmm. Maybe if some of the players in the, um, in the Asian Cup under 23 have particularly good games. Who knows? Can we see, for example, Lu'ay Al Ani selected with the with the main team? We don't know, but personally, I'll be honest with you. I hope to see some more expats selected. Uh, it's a shame that they're being left out. I think um, with Emjad Atwan, if he continues to perform the way he is in the middle of the park, he'd be able to form maybe a very good partnership with Osama Rashid. I'd like to see Rawan Amin selected and given a chance, um, but the you know the the one player that above all that I would like to see is Jilwan. I think um, if we look at that game with Bahrain where Rabin talked about us maybe just struggling to break them down when they sat back, that that would have been a perfect game to bring in Jilwan. And I keep saying this repeatedly about how how good he is in terms of breaking down a defense. And I think not only because he's technically very able to find the killer pass that's rightly weighted. I mean, other players, when they try to play the pass that Jilwan did, they'll they'll overpass it or uh, they just won't see the same pass that he would see. But not only that, he terms, in terms of um, his movement, in terms of the runs he makes... He offers so much going forward. He runs in behind the midfield and the defense, and it just it creates space for other players to utilize. Uh, I think one player in particular that might really benefit from playing with uh, with Jilwan would be uh, Ala Abbas, because if you have Jilwan, you know, running down yeah. the flanks and create pulling defenders away. That creates a lot of uh, space for a player like Ala Abbas to find room in the box, get on the end of chances and really convert them. So I'm hoping come the Hong Kong game we see Jilwan selected again. Who knows, you know, maybe if uh, maybe if Yasser Qasim gets himself uh, a decent uh, transfer, obviously somebody that uh, is a friend of mine, I wish him all the best. Mm-hmm. We never know where where we might be in three months, but I think one thing's for certain, despite all the uh, the questions that have been asked about Katanich, including from myself, um, I think he's he's earned the right for us to kind of just trust them a little bit more. He seems to know what he's doing. His uh, or some of his players seem to. Um, seem to really be buying into into his philosophy. I know Rebin's a big fan of him. Um, not all the players are, I'll be honest with you. I've heard some stuff about Katinich where maybe he's not been the best person at man managing, but not everybody's perfect. With Rebin, it seems that he's a big fan of, um, let's say, the lack of structure being given in training i know other players have told me that they're not a big fan of the the lack of structure because they want to be able to follow instructions more closely but um players are different players are going to respond differently to tactics and it seems to be working you know um if we look at if we look at iraq now compared to three years ago 
you know, we were playing, I'd say, under Schneeschel in the World Cup qualifiers. We were playing really good football. We were playing expansive passing football. But at no point did I personally feel going into a game we were that likely to win. But with Katinic, I don't know about you, but the last couple of games, um, you you could you could see us nicking something, and I know in hindsight I'm saying this maybe before the Asian Cup I I didn't really see that, but I think now going forward, I could see I could see a shape taking place, I could see a philosophy, and with that I think Katinic deserves to have fans be more patient obviously that doesn't mean he's perfect doesn't mean we can't criticize him but i think the uh the media narrative especially in iraq where they paint him as a villain that needs to really stop what do you think about this yeah so i mean i totally agree with you like uh your assessment of uh, you know the team under katanic and we definitely see some kind of a structure like uh, this team it doesn't give up goals easily we don't lose easily uh we get results even against you know bigger teams like against iran uh, i don't i think under a previous uh under iraqi coach uh, i don't think we'd ever win a game like that i don't, i can't i just can't see it maybe a draw but you know actually winning with uh, that kind of a performance i don't see that uh under katanet yeah, he he is really good at blocking out you know all the noise in uh, Iraqi football and there's a lot of noise and uh, you know just focusing on his work and just working towards his final goal which is World Cup qualification and actually building a solid team uh, something that I always uh, like to you know compare to is uh, uh, Iran under Quiroz Carlos Quiroz honestly uh, their play under him like they didn't play the best football but it was effective they were getting results. They were getting one near one, one zero victories. Uh, you know, zero zeros. Went, but they didn't lose uh, often, and they were getting results. And they got two World Cup qualif- uh, qualified to two successive World Cups on the back of those kinds of results. I think if we're to look at a framework in terms of how to how to copy the structure, Iran with Kirosh is a very very interesting case that Iraq should be kind of following with Katanich. Yeah. At the same That's time, exactly as, what I'm looking for. yeah. At yeah. the same time, if you look at um, how Bahrain are doing under their current manager, they've they've won the West Asian uh, Cup against us in the final. They won that game one uh, 0 in Iraq. Uh, in the Gulf Cup, they won that. So um, we lost again in both those tournaments to the winners of the competition, which is Bahrain. And if you compare Bahrain to Iraq, player to player, we're significantly better than them. But mm-hmm. it's about creating an effective system that knows how to play to its strengths. And I think we're in the process of doing that with Katanich. We're not quite there yet. There's a, um, there's a few issues in the team that I'd like to see corrected sooner rather than later. But um, it's uh, yeah, it's maybe it's not about having your best players. It's about having the best system that brings out the best of. Uh, of the plays available and I kind of trust Katanic to do that but um, I still part of me thinks there should be a few more few more plays brought in from from um, I hate using the word but from expats essentially because I think players like Jilwan I think players like uh, Osama uh, even Justin they have a lot to offer to the national team yeah yeah that's something that uh, like Katanich, that's my number one complaint so far, uh, is just we're not using this resource uh, as well as we should. Like uh, a lot of these players in countries like, you know, say Bahrain and Qatar, they'd kill to have like, you know, players like Ahmed Yassi and Jirawan just sitting there. And we're not even using them. Like Osama Rashid, uh, this is like a fantastic player and we haven't found a way to actually make him work in our uh, in our midfield for some reason uh you know we have players like this just sitting there and we're not you know they're not getting the right chances they're not in the right environment and uh that's one of the main uh things that uh Katanich really needs to look into is how can we get these players who are playing at their best level with the national team because there's a lot of quality in uh, in these players 
that uh, we're just not seeing. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, if player like Osama Rashid playing in, I think out of all the players we have, the highest league by far, Portugal first division, <clears throat> captaining his side, doing really really well, frequently selected as a player of the month or player of the week in, in the Portuguese league, playing against teams like Sporting Lisbon, Porto, Benfica, on on a weekly yep. basis. And it's just, it's mind-blowing that we've really failed to give a player like this an opportunity to prove himself. Um, I think another country, another another manager may have actually built the team around such a player, looked at ways to get the best out of him. Unfortunately, I, I just, we've not done that. We've not done that and um, it's a shame. Hassan, I want to ask you regarding the Asian Cup Under-23s, which is about to kick off in, a, I think it's about two more weeks, actually. What do you anticipate is going to happen in this tournament? There's been a lot of call-ups from the main squad, Maytham Jabbar. Uh, there's been talks of Ala Abbas, Mimi. But there's also been talks of players like Luay al uh, Have you seen much from the Under-23s, or uh, what do you think is going to happen? Honestly, like, uh, you know, at this kind of level, like uh, just right off the bat, uh, I'm not that interested with final results. Uh, you know, youth football, it should be about developing players. That's the number one thing. So for me, seeing players, you know, like Ala Abbas and Mohamed Ali, they're fantastic players and they definitely would make an impact for this team. But is that really necessary to be bringing them in? Uh, like, I think for competitions like this, we need to be constantly blooding new new players you know uh giving this is like a tournament for players to take their opportunity Mohamed Ali and Al Abbas we know that they're great players and they should be you know firm with the with the main team at this point so I want to see more players like uh Luay Al Ani uh Ali Al Hamadi uh players like that uh, that we haven't seen uh enough of you know they uh, players that you know, this is their this is uh, you know their chance to uh, make a name for themselves with the national team with Iraq, in Iraqi football to you know maybe make the jump for the national team to to to, to you know help us out maybe in the next round of qualifiers if if, uh, if they're good enough for that. So that's that's the main thing. Uh, aside from that, you know, I'm, I I just don't like seeing you know. Uh, players who are, you know, main with mainstays in the national team dropping down. I, I don't see the point of that. I think that's counterproductive. The thing is, I think the manager, Abdul Ghani Shad, for the Olympic team, he needs to find the right balance. Obviously, we're playing against some really, really good teams. And um, mm -hmm. you, you want to be able to make sure that the squad you have can compete. But at the same time, it's also about being able to develop players and giving it a, a chance to players that are currently in the under-23 team, players who have played a big part in qualifying to the Asian under-23 tournament. You want to make sure those players are also given a chance to continue developing, um, getting some publicity, and even in the long run, getting moves for themselves uh, internationally and progressing. So if we're looking at, for example, the, uh, the World Cup under-20s, uh, I think it was in 2013. That was the real tournament that Humam Tariq made the name for himself, Zurgham, Ali Adnan. Yeah. The players went on to get really big moves from there and they developed. And look at the player Ali Adnan is uh, now or turned out to be. The reason is, is that they, they had the, a platform to play. Ali Adnan, for example, got his uh, chance to sign for Riza Spore in Turkey and from there he went to Udinese. I think it's really important to give these young players an opportunity to continue progressing. If we're just so focused on winning all the time, um, I think we're not looking at the big run. If I was a young player playing for the under-23s and I saw, for example, my position being taken by, let's say for argument's sake, Maytham Jabbar, that would be very frustrating. And... Like I said, for Abdul Ghani Shahid, obviously he's going to want to have to focus on making a name for himself, on winning. In the in the group that we have, we're playing uh, Australia in the first match. 
I think we're also playing Bahrain under 23s. We can't seem to get enough of Bahrain. And then after that, after that, we're playing Thailand. I think it's like it's a problem that's uh, in in Iraqi football in general, where we're asking you know a lot of the national team from at all levels, and you know the Iraqi people they want. Of course, you know they have every right to want to see their team win trophies, uh, but at the same time, uh, people need to have a better view, a, a more you know long term view. Uh, uh, especially when it comes to youth tournaments, where you know you see uh, you know big national teams, uh, uh, bigger national teams, European teams, South American teams, they're not concerned at all with you know competitions like the Olympics. However, we're going all in so we can try to make an appearance there, uh, rather than you know developing our players so that we can possibly have you know a more a stronger national team going forward so that we can play at the actual World Cup. So. You know, it's, it's something that's uh, in the mentality of uh, Iraqi football as a whole that needs, uh, you know, we need to evaluate ourselves and our, uh, our uh, you know, our demands of the national team yeah, so I that think, we can... I think you're right. I think our things. priorities are a bit upside down. And as uh, members of the media, as fans, we have a kind of uh, a role to fix that. The first game that's going to kickstart the tournament is going to be Iraq versus Australia. That's going to be p played at the 8th of January. The next game is only three days later, 11th of January, Iraq, Bahrain. And then three days after that, it's Thailand versus Iraq. So plenty to look forward to. The winner of the group and the second team, they go through to the quarterfinals and the semis in the final. Who knows if Iraq is going to be part of that. I think we have a good chance though. There's a lot of talented players uh, in the squad. I've not seen them regularly, but from what I have seen, there's um, there's a lot this team has to offer. And, you know, with some of the bigger teams, the bigger players, there's some experience there as well. Fingers crossed. Let's look forward to those three games. Hopefully Iraq do well and we can see them progress. The next podcast hopefully is going to be following the tournament. We're going to do our best to get one of the younger talents from the Iraqi squad to join us on the next podcast. Hassan, I hope you can be there. And listen, I hope you're going to be listening to that as well. Hassan, thank you so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to have you here. And yeah, thanks for having me, so. Absolute pleasure. Right, so, fingers crossed, let's see some progress with the Iraq Under-23 squad. Yalla ya Iraq. Yalla ya Iraq.